Today, I'm going to talk about, again, the third way of praying um, with and through Scripture. Um, this is part two. Uh, last time, I talked about Lexio Divina, an imaginative prayer. And today, I'm going to talk about a couple other ways um, that you can use the Bible um, in prayer. And one of the simple ideas I have for using the Bible in prayer is to pick a book and just begin to meditate on one chapter a day. And from that book, I'm starting at the beginning and going all the way to the end. And one really good way to do this or a place to start with this is the, is the Gospels themselves. Um, for example, um, the Gospel of Mark has 16 chapters. And the Gospel of Matthew has 28. The Gospel of Luke has 24. The Gospel of John has 21. And so over a period of just two or three weeks, um, you could um, get through the whole gospel. Maybe it's three or four weeks. And there's something that different about that happens too, just spiritually for yourself. When you start with the gospel and you read the whole thing. Um, a lot of times we read little passages, maybe on Sundays at Mass, um, but it's different um, when you start at the beginning and go all the way through. And um, it's, it's a wonderful thing to do, and I, I highly encourage you to do that. Um, you could also use the Psalms. Of course, there's 150 Psalms, so that would take 150 days in theory. Um, you could also maybe do a couple of Psalms a day. Um, there's lots of different Psalms on all kinds of different topics. Um, the Psalms really um, express all the emotions that we go through, and um, there's so many beautiful um, Psalms. Um, there's also... You know, something as simple as the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Um, there's 16 chapters in that. Or you could um, use the, the book of the prophet Hosea, and there's 14 chapters in that. So, of course, that would take 16 days or, or 14 days. And, um, again, um, this is a, a, a very simple way to do it. Um, another kind of related way is that in the scriptures themselves, um, there's times where people actually pray. Um, there's long prayers in the scriptures. And when you find these prayers in the Bible and you pray with them yourself, um, one, it kind of teaches you maybe how to pray in some new ways. Um, a lot of times these prayers are very heartfelt. Um, people are in you know, distressing situations. And they're in places where something's about to happen and they really don't know what's going to happen, but they're choosing to um, trust God. And I found that the, the prayers in the Bible um, are, are wonderful. And so you could pray the person's prayer out loud. Um, for instance, um, there's a couple times in the Bible where people are just giving God glory um, for what he's doing in their life. Um, one of the most famous ones would be Mary's Magnificat in Luke in chapter 1, verse 46 to 55. Um, there's also Hannah's prayer in 1 Samuel chapter 2, um, 1 to 10. Um, Hannah's prayer and Mary's Magnificat actually have a lot of similarities, and they're both um, giving God glory um, for what he's done in their lives. Um, there's also prayers where people are more pleading with God. Um, they're asking God for something specific to happen. They're in a desperate um, situation, and they need God to intervene, and so they're, they're praying this prayer, asking him to intervene. Um, an example of that is Hannah has one of those as well. So when, when she's asking God to help her conceive, um, she has a, a prayer, just a short prayer in First Samuel, First Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. Um, Ezra has a, a prayer in Ezra chapter 9. 5 to 15. Um, Mordecai has a prayer. If you remember, Mordecai was um, Esther's uncle. Um, the people of Israel are about to be wiped out at this time, and um, Mordecai is trying to figure out how, um, how there can be an intervention. Um, eventually, um, it comes through, through Esther, through, through his niece. Um, but he is praying in, in Esther um, chapter C, um, verses 1 to 10, and there's Esther's prayer herself, um, which is later in that same chapter C, um, verse 12 to 30. And another prayer that you, you may not remember or have heard of 
on this Habakkuk's prayer. Yes, there is a book in the Bible called Habakkuk. And Habakkuk chapter 3, um, verse 2 to 19. Um, all of these are just powerful prayers. And so maybe you're in a time in your life where you're asking God to, enter, to help you in particular ways. And just by praying their prayer, and they can lead to you praying your own prayer. And um, and so that's a, a powerful way to pray. I'm just going back to the Psalms um, specifically uh, for a moment, um, just to point out a couple of Psalms. Um, Psalm 51 is um, the one that King David wrote um, after he committed adultery. So he's writing this Psalm after he commits adultery, asking God for forgiveness. Um, you know, it's interesting as priests, we pray the liturgy of the hours and we pray, you know, 12 to 15 psalms every day. And every Friday morning, the first psalm is always um, Psalm 51 um, from King David. Um, psalm 118 is a wonderful prayer of thanks and gratitude. Uh, maybe you want to thank and praise God for things that are happening in your life. Um, Psalm 118 can help inspire you to do that. And one of my favorite psalms is Psalm 139. Um, psalm 139 describes how intimately um, God knows everything about you, um, that really he knows you better than you know yourself, um, that he is caring for you, um, He, you are on his mind, um, he hasn't forgotten about you. And so Psalm 139 is, is a, a wonderful um, psalm to pray with. Um, lastly, you know, when we look at the life of Jesus, um, there's times where he's praying or he's teaching us how to pray. Um, of course, we have the Our Father where he's teaching us to pray the Our Father in Luke chapter 11, 1 to 4. And there's a longer prayer that Jesus prays at the end of his life um, in John chapter 17. And there's some, some little prayers um, on the cross in Luke chapter 23, verses 24. Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And maybe you're struggling to forgive someone and you um, say those words out loud and from, from Luke chapter 23. And, and it helps you, it encourages you, it strengthens you um, to be able to forgive. Um, there's also something interesting, maybe you don't know, but Psalm 22, um, the first verse is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, Jesus does pray this on the cross. Um, sometimes we just believe Jesus is in this great place of despair, and that's all there is to say about it. Um, and maybe he is really struggling to understand what's happening at that time. But if you read the whole psalm, um, it's 31 verses. By the end of Psalm 22, um, the psalmist is praising and thanking God um, for being with him through difficult times. And Jesus, um, you know, as a, as a rabbi, as a Jewish man, um, would have known um, this psalm. And so at the very least, he might have been thinking about this psalm, the rest of it. And maybe he didn't say it out loud or something that maybe he even whispered it out loud and nobody could hear him. But, but he, he was praying the whole psalm. Um, not just the first verse. And when you think of it that way, um, a lot a lot opens up um, with that. And again, it's also just a good psalm because there are times where we, we feel forsaken, where there are times where we need to express that, and it turns out that we can feel forsaken and we can also um, trust God at the same time. And and that psalm, that's what that psalm is really, really all about. So, in summary, um, there are many different ways to use the Bible for prayer. Um, I've, I've named some different ones for you. Lexio Divina, imaginative prayer, um, going through a book in the Bible, um, going using the Psalms specifically, um, using prayers that others have prayed in the Bible, and using um, Jesus' own words and teachings about prayer. And so I hope this helps you. Um, next time we will be looking at the fourth way to pray. God bless you.